Welcome to the Ohio Behavioral Health Information System, or OBIS. This tutorial will walk you through logging into the iPortal to access the OBIS application and how to enter records manually with the OBIS user interface. In this tutorial, we will go over the following topics. Logging in, the OBIS dashboard, the client tab, creating an admission record, editing a record, adding a different type of admission for the same client, and adding annual update transfer or discharge records. The OBIS application sits in an environment called iPortal. The URL shown in this slide is the address for iPortal login. To access OBIS, you must have an iPortal login ID and password. If you do not have an iPortal login ID and password, go to the registration link on the OBIS website. If you already have an iPortal account, there is a separate registration link on the OBIS website. The OBIS website link is shown here. There are several Ohio MHAS applications that can be accessed from iPortal. This training will demonstrate access to the OBIS user interface. Your OBIS icon should look like this, although it may say provider user and not provider administrator. If you do not see an OBIS icon when you log into iPortal, there has been a problem with your OBIS registration. All agencies should have a provider administrator who initially registers in iPortal for OBIS. Your agency's provider administrator approves access for all other OBIS users at the agency. If you do not see an OBIS icon when you log into iPortal, it is for one of two reasons. There is not a provider administrator registered and approved for your agency, or your provider administrator has not yet approved your OBIS registration. To access the application, click on the OBIS icon. You will see a second login portal after you click on the OBIS icon. This is a security feature. You will see the outlined messages on your screen. The information you need to complete your login will immediately arrive in your email inbox. If you do not receive an email with a passcode, check your spam or junk folder. This is what the OBIS dashboard looks like once you've passed through the security login. At the top of the screen is a bar with OBIS features. In the middle of the screen you will see the following. Notifications, your agency name, this may be a fixed field with a single name or there may be a toggle switch that allows you to select various sites registered under your agency. Most provider identification will be a fixed field with a single name. Client records pending verification is a very important folder. It tells you which records have not yet been verified by the Ohio MHAS Community Data Warehouse. We will go over this folder in greater detail on the next slide. The following three folders contain records you may have started and failed to complete during the course of a data entry session. Client Records Pending Verification Folder In the verification process, Ohio MHAS tries to match the client information on an OBIS admission record with enrollment information from a claim for services. Sometimes there's a lag of weeks or even months between the creation of an OBIS client record and the receipt of enrollment information from a claim. OBIS client records will pend verification until Ohio MHAS data processing can find a matching enrollment in Medicaid files or a board claims system such as GOSH or SHARES. Do not assume records pending verification are due to a lag in claims processing. Records that are not verified usually have a problem being matched to a record in the Ohio MHAS database because of data entry errors. The mismatch may be because the date of birth and identifier number do not match a database record. This is what you see when you click on an incomplete records folder. It allows you to go to an incomplete record by clicking on the edit link. An incomplete record will remain in the folder for 14 days. After that, the incomplete record is deleted and you must re-enter the information for that client. Let's take a look at what you'll find when you click on the dashboard tabs at the top of the screen. Clicking on the home tab will bring you back to the applications dashboard. 
Opening the Client tab will take you to the user interface where you can manually enter data into record templates. The Batch Upload tab will take you to a feature that allows you to load flat files. All documentation for the application is found under this tab. Provider Setup is where you link your agency to a board or identify as Medicaid only. The Provider Setup must be completed by your agency's Provider Administrator at least one time in order for Ohio MHAS to process OBIS records. There's more about this on the next slide. As we've already mentioned, it is necessary to set up your agency's new OBIS account with information about sources of public funding. This only needs to be done once, although the Provider Administrator can update the information at any time. If your agency does not have a contract with a local ADAM board, you would say yes to the question about being a Medicaid-only provider. Because of our oversight role, the Ohio Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services is the paying entity for clients covered by Medicaid. If your agency has a contract with one or more ADAM boards, you would say no to the question about being a Medicaid-only provider. The drop-down box will give you a list of boards with check boxes. Don't forget to include the Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services for your Medicaid clients if this option is not already pre-selected. The Documentation tab has answers to nearly all your questions. The OBIS Master Guide provides step-by-step -step instructions on how to use the application. Later in the presentation, we'll talk about business rules that guide what you can and cannot enter into the data entry template. You'll also find the data entry forms under documentation, which can be used to collect information from the client. The forms lay out all the data entry fields with response options. You'll want to check out the OBIS field definitions document to be sure you understand the correct answer for some of the fields in the data entry template. For example, if your client is a 20-year-old college student who works part-time, how would you indicate that client's employment status? Would you choose part-time employed or student, not in labor force? You'll find the answer on page 6 of the field definitions manual. Ohio MHAS has done a lot of work on the definitions for housing options in the living arrangement field. Take time to review the housing definitions. For mental health clients, it's important to understand the distinction between residential care versus type 1 residential bed facilities. One is a living arrangement and the other is a care setting. The Client tab is your gateway into the data entry template. When you click on this tab, you will see two options, Create Client and Search Client. Clicking on Search Client link brings up the search window. This will help you find existing records. You can search by client first name or last name or both, by the ID number associated with the client's payment source, or a provider client ID number that is unique to your agency's record system. It's important to understand client ID numbers. The identifier number would be a Medicaid ID or the GOSH, SHARES, Heartland, McSIS, or Social Security number that was entered when the client record was first created. Although the client's payer source and ID number may change over time, this original ID number entered into OBIS will remain the same and does not ever need to be changed. The provider client ID is a sp number specific to your agency's record system. It is not a required field in OBIS. You may want to use this field to identify clients in OBIS by using numbers unique to your agency's internal record system. The status field can be used to search for OBIS records according to where they are in the verification process. Options are pending verification, verified, or private pay. Private pay records are never processed or verified by Ohio MHAS. We will explain more about the private pay option later. Clicking on the Create Client link brings up the client record template. The provider will usually be a fixed field with a single name, although it is possible to have multiple sites listed in this field. If a field has a red asterisk, 
the information is required. You cannot leave the field blank. You must check the box labeled, a signed release for this information has been obtained, in order to create the record. This is a HIPAA requirement. Without checking the release of information disclaimer, you cannot submit the information to Ohio MHAS. Let's go over some things you need to know about specific fields in a client record. The identifier type tells Ohio MHAS the source of the client identification number. This helps with the verification process. Your options are GOSH, Medicaid, Private Pay, Shares, Social Security Number, Mixis, Heartland, or Unknown. If you select Unknown or Private Pay, the record will not be processed by Ohio MHAS. You may choose to use the Private Pay option if you'd like to enter all clients served by your agency into the OBIS record system. Because these records are not processed by Ohio MHAS, however, they will not be included in any reports of your data in the OBIS reports application. The identifier number must be one of the following. A 12-digit Medicaid number, not the managed care case number. An alphanumeric GOSH identifier. A SHARES, Heartland, or McSIS number or a social security number. You will not be able to enter a number into this field if you selected private pay or unknown as your identifier type. Finally, gender options are male, female, and unknown. If the client is transgender, use the client's chosen ident gender identity. Information about non-conforming gender identity can be entered later under special populations in the admission record. When you've entered the required fields, you will move on to the admission record screen with the next button. All new client records require creation of an admission record. This is what the opening screen for the admission record looks like. You will see the client's name, age, gender, and race at the top of the screen. You must choose the type of admission that reflects the client's treatment. Whether or not you choose an AOD, MH, or dual AOD, MH admission, you can enter only one paying entity, that is, either a single board or Ohio MHAS, but not both, on the subsequent admission form. Once you've selected your admission type, the application will automatically move to the next page. When you open the form for an admission record, you will be asked to enter data through a series of screens. The screen you are currently in will be highlighted with a blue circle and line indicator. A dual admission record for AOD and MH will have five screens for data entry. If you select anything other than a dual admission, you will have four data entry screens. After you complete data entry for a screen, you can move on by clicking on the Next button at the bottom of the screen. If you have not completed all required fields, the system will not let you advance. Notice that you cannot move from the first section of the admission record, the client information screen, back to the client record screen. You can only move on to the next section of the admission record. If you want to move from an admission screen back to the client record to make a change, you can hit Save and Finish Later, which will drop you out of the data entry process and return you to the dashboard. At that point, you can open the Incomplete Records folder where you will need to click on the Edit link. This is the first page of the admission record. On this slide, we're looking at the left side of the client information screen. Remember how we said you should review field definitions? There's an option in the current education enrollment field that basically means not enrolled in school. The option is, has not attended school at any time in the last three months. In this case, we've given you the definition of not enrolled in school. This is one of the only times we do that with a response option. In some cases, an agency may only be providing an assessment and referral, but not treatment. In such a case, there is no episode of care. There is only an assessment and referral for treatment. If your agency provides treatment for the client, select No. 
If you select any option other than no, an administrative close will be created for the admission. The provider client number is optional. It is specific to the agency's record system and can be used to search for records in OBIS. This is the right side of the client information screen. We cannot overstate the importance of understanding the definition of the options you are given to select from for a particular field. This is especially true for the options under living arrangement. If your agency is licensed to provide type 1 bed residential treatment, you should not select the residential care option under living arrangement. If the client is being admitted to care in a type 1 bed, indicate the living arrangement just prior to admission to the type 1 bed care setting. Here's where the provider setup comes into play. If your OBIS provider administrator has not completed the provider setup for your agency's OBIS account, there will be no options to select from in the paying entity slash board field on the admission record. Some clients start on board funds and later are covered by Medicaid. Select the board if it is the payer source at admission, regardless of whether the client is later covered by Medicaid. Other clients start with Medicaid coverage and later receive services covered by board funding. If the client started out covered by Medicaid, select Ohio MHAS as the paying entity. After you have completed all the required fields, hit the Next button at the bottom of the client information screen. This is the Children and Household section of the admission record. It has fewer fields than the previous section. If the client's gender is male, you will not see questions about pregnancy and childbirth. You will only see a question about number of children in the household. We've noted the values to enter if the answer is none or unknown for the number of children in household or number of pregnancy fields. These are also found in the business rules document. At the bottom of the screen in each section there are a series of buttons. These buttons allow you to move from one completed section to the next. If you ch choose Save and Finish Later before completing a new client and admission record, your work will sit in the Incomplete Admission Records folder on the dashboard for 14 days. After that, the incomplete record will be deleted and you will need to start again. When you've answered all the required fields in the previous section and click on Next, you will be taken to the Special Population screen. Notice the option Non-Conforming Gender Identity is on the list. This is where a non-binary gender identity is documented. If you don't have any information about the client's special population characteristics, you must indicate no special population before you click on the Next button. This is the upper left-hand side of the AOD information screen. This is where you will locate and select information about the client's diagnosis. The template on the AOD information screen will default to the AOD code set from the ICD-10. If you want to select from the DSM-5 code set, you can do this by clicking on the tab for the DSM-5 codes. The DSM-5 code set is an abbreviated list of ICD-10 codes. The DSM-5 code set does not contain the full range of diagnostic codes found in the ICD-10. Search for the code you wish to enter and select it by highlighting. If this is an admission for AOD treatment, you must enter a primary diagnosis from the list of substance use disorders. You can enter a secondary or tertiary diagnostic code from the list of non-AOD codes. To do this, click on the tab with a list of codes from which you wish to select. This is the upper right hand side of the AOD information screen. This is where you will enter the primary, secondary, and or tertiary diagnostic codes. You can enter a diagnostic code by highlighting the diagnosis found in the code set on the left hand side of the screen and then clicking on the right arrow to the side of the selection box. This will move the diagnostic code into the selection box shown here. 
Use the left arrow to remove the selected diagnosis from the box. As you can see from the red asterisk, you must enter an AOD diagnostic code into the selection box for the primary diagnosis. Secondary or tertiary diagnoses can be either MH or AOD and are optional. A list that categorizes diagnoses as AOD only, MH only, or either AOD or MH is found under the documentation tab. This is the lower left side of the AOD information screen. This is where you will enter level of care information, mental health history associated with an AOD client, and information about medicated assisted treatment. The first two fields asking for drug of choice information appear at the bottom left side of the screen. This is the lower right side of the AOD information screen where you'll see a continuation of the drug of choice fields. You can enter unknown in the drug of choice fields and if age is unknown, you should enter 97. You cannot leave the age field blank. And if you enter zero, you're documenting the age of first use was prior to age one. The upper left hand side of the MH information screen contains diagnostic codes and looks exactly like the AOD information screen, except that the list of diagnostic codes defaults to MH codes from the ICD-10. If you wish to use the abbreviated list of DSM-5 codes, you can select that option. Search for the code you wish to enter and select it by highlighting. Since this is an admission for MH treatment, you must enter a primary diagnosis from the list of mental health disorders on the MH information screen. You can enter a secondary or tertiary diagnostic code from the list of non-MH codes. To do this, click on the tab with the list of codes from which you wish to select. This is the upper right hand side of the MH information screen. This is where you will enter primary, secondary, and or tertiary diagnostic codes. You can enter a diagnostic code by highlighting the diagnosis found in the code set on the left hand side of the screen and clicking on the right arrow to the side of the selection box shown here. This will move the diagnostic code into the selection box. Use the left arrow to remove the selected diagnosis from the box. As you can see from the red asterisk, you must enter an MH diagnostic code into the selection box for the primary diagnosis. Secondary and tertiary diagnosis can be either MH or AOD and are optional. A list that categorizes diagnosis as AOD only, MH only, or either AOD or MH is found under the documentation tab. There are three possible care settings for a client receiving treatment for a mental health condition. The vast majority are community, but some receive services in jail. Some clients are treated in residential type 1 bed settings. If your client is receiving care in another type of residential bed, other than type 1 bed, you should enter community as the care setting and then indicate residential facility under the living arrangement. After you hit the submit button on a completed record, you will see the following message. The admission record information has been submitted successfully. At this point, you can return to the dashboard to search for the client record you've just entered or click on create new client to start an admission record for another client. Once an admission record has been entered, you can create update, transfer, or discharge records for that client's episode of care. When you click on search client and enter the client's name, the application brings up the records you've created under a list of clients header. Clicking on select will take you to the admission record and any associated records, such as updates, transfers, or discharges. Selecting edit will take you to the client record. You can edit the client record until it has been verified. Once a client record has been verified, you must contact Ohio MHAS to make changes. Selecting delete will delete the client record and the associated admission. You cannot delete a client record after it has been verified or 
an update, transfer, or discharge record has been added. You are only able to view the record. When you click on Select, you will be taken to the list of records shown here. This is where it may help you to review the business rules document. For example, you can edit or delete an admission record as long as you have not added a transfer, update, or discharge record, or it has not been more than six months, 180 days, since the admission record was created. Example A shows an MH admission. Notice that this admission type allows for creation of an annual update record or a discharge record. Annual updates are only used with MH admissions. Example B shows an AOD admission. Notice that this admission type allows for creation of a transfer record or a discharge record. You are only able to view the admission record, you cannot edit, because this admission already has a transfer record. Transfers are used only with AOD admissions. You can create additional transfer records or you can view the transfer record that has already been entered. You cannot create a second AOD admission record for this client when there is not a discharge record. You can add a different admission type to an existing admission. In this example, there is an existing MH admission. You cannot add another MH admission until you create a discharge, but you can add an AOD admission for this client by clicking on the Create New Admission button. This will open the screen where you indicate the type of admission you want to add. The system will not let you add a new MH admission if there is no discharge record because the MH admission is still open. The system will not let you select AOD and MH admission because there is an open MH admission. You can only add an AOD admission. Here's an example of what happens when you try to create a new admission for a client who has an open MH admission and an open AOD admission. When you click on Create a new admission and select MH admission type, you will get a message that says, a new admission record cannot be created until all other MH admission records of this type for this client have been discharged. This slide highlights important rules governing transfer, annual update, or discharge records. For example, you can add an unlimited number of transfer or update records until there is a discharge for the episode of care. A transfer record older than 180 days cannot be deleted. An annual update record older than 180 days cannot be deleted. If you wish to edit a locked update record older than 180 days, you must delete the record and recreate it. OBIS has a number of rules governing the creation, editing, and deletion of records. If you're confused about what you can or can't do, look at the business rules document. This slide shows the lower screen for a transfer record. This is what will appear when you click on the create link next to transfer on the AOD admission we saw in the list of records. You'll see that date of admission and admission level of care have been pre-populated from the admission record. You only need to add the date of the transfer and the level of care to which the client is being moved. Click on the Add Client Transfer button to add the record. This slide shows the full left side and part of the right side of the screen you will get when you click on the Create link next to the Annual Update that appears in the List of Records window. This shows you client information from the admission record. Click on the Create Annual Update button at the bottom of the screen to get into the update form for data entry. There are three screens in the Annual Update form. This is the Client Information screen. It collects data for the National Outcome Measures, or NOMS. The NOMS are educational enrollment for kids and or employment status for adults, living arrangement and police involvement which is measured as number of arrests. These items are measured at time one on the admission form. At update the items are measured at time two. 
With this information, a change in status can be calculated in the OBIS reports application. Keep in mind that you will only do annual updates on an MH client who is in continuous treatment for one year or more. Continuous enrollment and treatment is defined as a treatment episode without a gap in services of 270 days or more. After clients have been in treatment for some time, you may have more information about their representation as a special population. The annual update is an opportunity to identify additional issues that could impact their treatment outcomes. The annual update form also gives you an opportunity to provide information about any new diagnosis since admission. If there are no new diagnoses, select 99.9998 or 99.9997. If the care setting has changed, for example, the client was discharged from a type one bed residential to the community, this is when to update that information. When you've completed the third screen, hit the submission button. This is the discharge record. There are up to five screens to complete if the client is a woman, and four screens if the client is a man. The first screen collects information on national outcome measures, or NOMS. You can learn more about the NOMS by going to the website for the Federal Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administrations, or SAMHSA. The NOMs are measured at time one on the admission form. At discharge, the items are measured at time two. With this information, a change in status can be calculated in the OBIS reports application. If the client is female, you will see the children and household screen after the client information screen. The system will autofill the answer to, was the client pregnant at admission? You will be asked to provide additional information about pregnancy status at discharge. The discharge record also has a special population screen. At discharge, you'll have an opportunity to add additional information about the client. If you don't have any additional information, you must click on the No Special Population field in order to move to the next screen. If you are doing a discharge for an MH admission, you will see the MH information screen after the special population screen. This screen asks about any changes in the diagnostic information and the care setting. If there are no diagnostic changes, enter 99.9998 or 99.9997. Otherwise, enter any new diagnoses since admission. If there has been a change in the care setting since admission, this is where you would indicate the change. If you are doing a discharge for an AOD admission, you will see the AOD information screen after the special population section. If there are no diagnostic changes, enter 99.9998 or 99.9997. Otherwise, enter any new diagnoses since admission. You are also asked to answer questions about changes in drug of choice, attendance at self-health programs, level of care at discharge, the role of client religious preference, and whether the client was screened for a gambling disorder while in treatment. This is the final screen of a discharge record. This is where you'll select the discharge reason and enter the discharge date. Hit submit to enter the completed record. This concludes our tutorial on the OBIS user interface. If you have any questions, please take a look at the user guide in the business rules before emailing or calling. You can find OBIS documentation and additional information about the system on the Ohio MHAS website. There will be a tutorial available on the OBIS reports application in the near future.